Hi everyone, I'm thrilled you're joining us today because we're here with Kevin Gibbon, the co-founder and CEO of SHIP. Thanks so much for joining us, Kevin. Yeah, thank, thanks so much. It's great to be here. As we were saying right before we started the recording, it's been a really wild ride the last 18 months for you. Can you take us back to starting SHIP and everything that went on with AngelList to get you guys where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take a, a step even further than that, if you don't mind, um, to where we actually came up with the idea. <clears throat> I actually used to be an eBay power seller 10 years ago. I was in college. Uh, what I did is I imported products from around the world and basically sold them all on eBay to try to make some money. It was a, as a pure, just let's make some money for myself through college. Um, but what I actually really found out there that my biggest pain point were, was the actual shipping and packaging of these of these products and, and sending all, all the way around to my customers all around the world. Um, and it was so much of a pain point that, that I, I ended up actually shutting down the business. Um, but what I did take away from that was that it's a really big pain point for a lot of, a lot of other people. Um, and I, kind, I wanted to solve that to, for everybody, but I didn't really, really quite know how. Um, so I came to San Francisco two, two years ago. Uh, I was working with another company, and that's where I met my... Uh, my now, now co-founder Josh, uh, and we just kind of bonded over this really ridiculous level of high user experience that that we really think that that consumer products should have. Um, and with my knowledge of this huge pain point in an industry that hasn't really changed in in, in 30, 40 years, um, and then so we kind of just decided to start this thing. And we, well, how we looked at it was we looked at it from the the viewpoint of of what is. What is the largest pain point here? If we were going to solve this, taking everything out of the picture, what would the absolute best solution be? And what we found is that all it is is that you have you have things that you want to move to other other places around the world. There's these huge shipping <coughs> shipping uh, logistics networks that are really good. Once you have them into into a box into uh, a truck, they actually get ar around the world quite quite easily. Um, but it's really that that first mile piece that's the the biggest problem for people. So that's where we decided to start. Um, but from from AngelList, when we started, uh, we were just two guys in our in our garage and uh, doing all the packaging ourselves. And we had a, a very early on products. Um, and we started telling our story. Uh, we somehow got connected with Naval, and he loved it so much. Just the idea, just that that pain point um, that he he decided to feature us on AngelList, and uh, we were like. We, we had some connections in San Francisco, but really not not many at all. We were both, we've only been in, in the Bay Area for a couple of years. We have an engineering product backgrounds. Um, but he kind of started started off that snowball by just kind of looking at what we've done previously and seeing how big of a potential opportunity this could be. Um, and from there, we kind of met a lot of investors and then raised our, our seed round from that. A lot of investors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your best advice, Kevin, for a startup founder to really take advantage of AngelList? Um, I think it's, so for one, um, make sure that your profile is the absolute highest quality it could be. Like, we were obsessed over this, the smallest little details. It's, sometimes it's even, it's good to omit information um, if, if it's not something that you want to share. Like, product imagery is, is really great. Um, if you look at how, how Kickstarter has taken off, it's, you could raise something on the basis of a product video alone. So make sure that every piece that people see of you is the highest caliber of, that you want to show to everybody else. Um, but it's also about, it's all about showing traction. Like when we very first got featured, uh, it wasn't like it, a flood of people are just giving us money. Uh, it started off the process, but when we really started gaining traction, it was just kind of all the social proof. It was okay, now we've got 250K committed, now we've got 300K committed. Um, investors, it's, it's, uh, they want to know that this thing has some legs. It's not just two guys an idea, but you have other credible investors that are also willing to put money in as well. Um, so it, it, that is really important. Cool. cool. And uh, so you've mentioned that also uh, Kamal and Naval are both investors. What are you learning from them? Because we, we love them and we just want to hear some of their advice. <laughs> Yeah, they were really good early on. Um, so Kamal, from an author standpoint, gave us a lot of great feedback and how he would use the product, the product and what he would really need. So I definitely say he was more so on the product side of things. Naval, he's honestly been a help ever since we met him. He's 
so knowledgeable with the with the investor side of things and how to negotiate things and and in introductions and and all that type of stuff. Um, and I think he'll he'll continue to be valuable. His I think and I don't think that's the same for a lot of other investors. I see uh, uh, most investors will fit in a certain stage and they're really good at that. They're really good at helping companies take nothing from something. Um, but I think of all, he kind of spans the board. He's been in, involved in companies that that get really large and also where they, they start. So I think uh, his his knowledge is going to be helpful um, for, for hopefully quite a while with us. Yeah, is Kamal teaching you to love yourself? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So in addition to them, though, like we mentioned, there's a huge group of investors. So how are you navigating the feedback from so many successful entrepreneurs? Um, I think it's really about um, a pull in, instead of a push. I think that investors who push information on you, sometimes it's not like if you imagine you're a founder and you've got just to say 20 investors imagine everybody's pushing information at you it can be quite overwhelming um, but the good investors realize that that's not that's not that's not what founders want um, they want you to be there when you have questions or you're looking for specific introductions um, and besides that it's it's almost kind of it's good to be hands off almost um, so that's exactly what we do we're we're, we're not talking to investors every day, every week, and every month in some cases, but um, we do periodically reach out to these to these folks for pointed questions, pointed introductions, um, and I think I'll continue to do so. I want to shift gears, Kevin, for a moment and talk about hiring because you mentioned that you started two people in a garage and now you guys are a huge organization. Right. I know you target two characteristics in people, and that's empathy and the courage to take risks. Yes. Those are pretty hard to test for in an interview. So how do you do it? It's honestly, I wish it was easier. I, me personally, it's all been about guts. Um, and I've made I, I, I think one or two hires in the last year or so that I haven't felt like I didn't, my gut had just hadn't didn't have that feeling, and they turned out to be um, bad hires. Um, but I think those are some really important traits. Um, I I like to think that I have both of those. Um, maybe that's ar arguable, um, but I think it, it just shows a lot about your your personality. Like the empathy uh, is just so important. Like from a product perspective, like can you put your yourself into that user's shoe when they press this button? Are they going to understand the full context of what that means? Um, and if you don't have that the empathetic um, uh, trait, it's you just can't do that. Um, and as, as far as failure, like I think that. That's personally something I have a lot of, um, and I know my co-founder does as well. Um, and it's just, it almost just gives you this uh, extra gear that you just want to succeed so badly. Like, my, my personal drive is to look back in my career and actually can point to a few things that I've had a major impact in that. Um, and so far, to, to fail, it just gives me um, the, the power to try to, try to succeed in something. Um, and I look back to a lot of the other people that we've hired that have had similar, um, similar stories. It's the exact same thing with us, with them. You touch on that guts to do something that's different. Mm -hmm. And it does relate back to someone either being born a risk taker or learning to be a risk taker. Do you think someone can learn to be a risk taker? Uh, that's a good question. I, I would probably lean to say no. I think that may be something that you are born with. But I'm, I'm sure that I would be proven wrong. Um, the people that I look to, that I know that are risk takers, they've been like that all their lives. Um, but I think that even in a company like ours, like there is so much room. Like I think when founding is definitely risk taking is, is a big trait that is really important. Um, but as you grow a company, there's room for all different traits of people and, and risk taking doesn't need, doesn't need to be so like a person who joins as a 50th or 100 employee doesn't necessarily have to be a big risk taker. They could just be really talented in, in their specific set of, of skills. And that's Great. okay. So on the subject of risk taking, let's talk <laughs> about expansion now. Yeah. Um, so right now you're doing a mini beta before you officially launch in each city. Yeah. Will you be able to do this through scale though? Um, I, to TBD right now, I think that like one of the things that we're trying to do is launch every next city faster than we did the previous one. Um, so like, will there even be time to, to do that beta list? Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, what we found it was just that it worked well. Um, it worked well with, uh, with New York and it's working well with Miami, but just like anything, we're, we're continually looking at, at, 
at everything and, and to evaluate if this is something we want to do um, for every city and go f going forward. So what is your beta program? Oh, yeah, you should. But <laughs> what does your beta program look like then? Um, it's really just giving uh, early access to the service in the markets that we're in. Um, and one of the reasons we do that, uh, one, of the, one of the key metrics that we know we're ready to launch a city uh, is when we get uh, our pickup times down to a certain point. And that changes with every city. Every city has, has got a different landscape. Um, and so the beta program is really important to that because we know we have enough density um, for the demand that we're able to flip the switch and actually launch a city. All right. And so now I'm going to shift over to uh, we have some questions from our audience. If you don't mind, right. the first one is from Frank. Any plans for SHIP to try to make money in the backhaul and transportation to empty miles are always wasted miles? Yeah, I think that that, that is really interesting. Um, what what we've done is, I think it's so important to focus. And right now, we're, we're looking to focus. We're solving this pain point for consumers and very small business with, with an iPhone app. We'll be launching our Android app, app shortly. Um, and I think this just the industry we're in, there's so many different types of things we get into, but I think it's all about focus. And if we started doing a lot of this stuff, especially early on, we would just get distracted. And we, we only have a certain amount of, of people and a certain amount of money. Um, so right now, absolutely not, not something that we're focused on. How do you personally, Kevin, decide when you notice that you're shifting off focus? When do you know it's a good opportunity to pursue? And when do you know you have to go back and just start with the mission? Yeah, it's, it's really... it's. It's about always continuously reprioritizing um, things because opportunities are going to come out of the blue, which you never, ever expected. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's almost like, like a gut instinct. And, but that's also where some investors as well can come in that have been to, been in this, these situations before and help guide that. Um, but it's trying to, it's really looking at all like the, the pros and cons of everything and then just being um, meticulous at, at, at reprioritizing. And when it does make sense to to bump something up to the front of the queue, you just kind of got to do that. Um, and then reevaluate if that was the right decision to make or not. Great. So our next question comes from Fawaz Ahmed, and he wants to know how you guys are nailing profit margins and if you have any tips on coming up with a good one. Um, it's, it's something that doesn't, you can't really start from a profit margin, of course. If you could, that'd, that'd be great. Let's all, let's go for 99%. <laughs> Um, but it, for, for me, it was really just starting with the pain point. Um, and a pro profit margin really doesn't make, mean anything unless you have the, the, the people to, to sell the product or service to. So I definitely think that, that we just looked at it from that, that um, respect. And then we found, wow, this, doing this, we're able to save the carriers a lot of money. And in turn, they're going to be able to share the, our, um, their margins with us. So this, wow, this, is, this is really makes sense. Um, but I don't think there's. I don't think going the other way. Um, it really makes a lot of sense. Great. Cool. Well, so thank you for answering those first of all. And uh, so next, um, I mean, all these uh, shipping companies that you're working with actually like <laughs> you guys, which is rare, especially when you're disrupting a 200 year industry. So how are you taking advantage of this? Um, I think it's it's really. Um, we yeah we, we're we're looking at it as, as a very much a partner relationship, and we cannot do this without them. We're not to create uh, another UPS from from laying the trucks on the grounds to the, the planes is very insurmountable. Um, but we're looking to just help out in that that one piece, and arguably to us is that it's the most friction filled piece. Um, and essentially, what happens is we're actually unlocking a lot of business that they wouldn't have been able to get. Um, if, they, if this R service didn't exist, like I'm not sure if, you've, if you if yourselves or anyone in your audience has had something that sat on their desk for three months that there was a gift and it's way past <laughs> you. Have. Okay, um, so it's it's we're really enabling those type of things. Um, another really interesting piece is e-commerce returns. Um, a lot of like the the FedEx and UPSs. Um, they see when you print that label. They see when you had that intent to actually ship back that, that item to Amazon. But what they don't see is when you actually put it into the mail and send it back. Um, so there's a lot of things that with, with us, with having that, that instant press the button, will come to you, no packaging required, that these companies just aren't able to, um, to make happen. Um, so in turn, they're, they're really great partners of ours. Great. 
And then also just internally, you have so many just operational intricacies. So how are you, I mean, what kind of systems are you using to manage everything? It's fully custom from um, the, the very bottom up. Uh, we have, like, it would have been nice to just put a system in place and have it work. Um, we're having so many unique problems from the point, if you can imagine, like, we have, we have a consumer Canada. application. <laughs> yeah. We have a consumer application that uh, is really just the user experience is like really hard to nail. Um, and then as soon as somebody sh shows up at your door, we have to be able to actually take an unpackaged item, get it back into their vehicle, and then get it back to the, the warehouse where we professionally package it and then get it into the right carrier's hand. Um, and tracking that whole process is very, very difficult. Um, and it only could have been done by a world-class product and engineering team. Um, so even though it on, on the outside, it, it, we, we are we're a, an operational logistics company, but our, our product and, and, and uh, engineering team is the absolute best. Um, and we'll continue to get better in all these areas. Yeah, and you actually look at your own employees as customers. So I, I'm wondering, how, what's your best advice just to provide 100% all the time the best user experience? Yeah, it's it's you know what it's it's a lot of the things that make sense. Like uh, compensation is really important, of course, but there are a lot of little things that you could do to to make people feel a part of this. Uh, we do a lot of community events. Um, we we even so we, what happens is we have we have a van. We call it a satellite. It orbits around a city, um, and so what its purpose is actually is to to unload the items from all of our of our ship heroes driving around the city. It's as easy as putting some sodas and maybe some snacks in there. Um, there's little things that you could do to show that you care. Um, and we're continually getting feedback from them, um, making the process better, um, putting more time into our actual technology for them. Um, it's a lot of different things, but it's it just really started with like, I don't know if it's it's my personal empathy and my co-founders that have started this and it's kind of transcended through the organization. Um, but we really just care um, about their, their well-being. Um, and it's turned, and they, we see it. And it, in turn, uh, it increases the actual uh, experience which they have with our customers um, who are actually paying us money. So that is important. What are some of the community events you found to be most effective for bringing, one, bringing everyone together outside of the office? Um, so we do a lot of happy hours, and we get a lot of the um, uh, the ship heroes to even choose the events and what do they like, and just continually asking. I think I think it's it's all about just just having really an open mind and just asking the community what they want. We we don't really know, so we we look for for help in those areas. Great. And so whether it's your team, Kevin, or it's your customers, one of the things I admire most about Ship is that your mission is to empower individuals. As you Absolutely. move forward with the company, what's the most important way you want to empower people, especially small business owners? Because I know that's a market with your eBay experience that you're after. Yeah. It's really to um, allow them to focus on what they're best at. I think that this, this industry, it, it potentially can unlock so many different things from your time, uh, but also just enabling people to create businesses. Uh, if you take Etsy, for example, uh, these are people that are creating, handcrafting these items, and they don't know how to ship things. That they're, they're literally not allowing international sales to happen because they don't know how to deal with the customs paperwork. Um, so I really think it's just really about empowering um, individuals to do um, what they really want to do. Um, but the other answer is I honestly don't, don't know what's going to happen. I think whenever you take uh, a lot of friction away from a a very friction-filled, very large industry. Some very creative and um, things happen, and I'm just really not sure what those are going to be yet. But I'm 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 really excited to see what they are. Yeah, I've got to say, my uh, my girlfriend is an Etsy seller, and our living room is just littered <laughs> with crazy shipping boxes, and it's a mess. So you guys, you found a pretty great problem to solve. That's great. That's that's really happy. Cleaning up my living room. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you mentioned that you don't know what's going to happen and that's really exciting. And yeah. as great as that is, sometimes as a founder, I think, hey, it would be really nice to know if I actually knew it was going to happen. How do you embrace right. the unknown? I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just the, the positive thinker that I, that I am. I always think that the unknown is going to be so amazing um, and maybe that's what keeps me, keeps me going. 
Um, but I, it, I think it can't be anything but, but positive. Um, we're really, we're, we're helping consumers, businesses, uh, do something they were never, never able to do so before. And I think that can, nothing but good could come from that. Great. So before we close, I was wondering if you can share with us some new features that are coming up for SHIP and where you guys are planning on going after Miami. If you can't disclose that, that's okay. I yeah. just want it to be San Diego. So we do have, we have an Android app in the works. It's very, very close uh, to completion um, and really excited to have that. Um, and another thing also is that if you can imagine, um, so we have very small businesses that are using us and taking a picture of every single item can be, can be cumbersome if you have 20 to 100 items. Um, so one of the next things that we're focusing on to expand our business offering is just having products that are specifically designed for the, the, the smaller to even medium sized businesses that may even have hundreds or thousands of items. Um, so nothing to announce yet, but that's definitely the direction that, that we're going in. Um, and as far as city expansion, honestly, how we decide, how we decide uh, city expansion is really on all the learnings that we've taken from the previous city. So we, we, on, we do not even know what the next city is going to be, but um, we'll be looking to, to launch uh, that one shortly after Miami um, in late November. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Before we yeah. go, can you tell people how they can get on ship and start using it? Absolutely. Um, you could see more information at ship.com, that's S-H-Y-P.com, um, or you can go to the iPhone app store and uh, download it onto your phone today. Great. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.